I recently got quite a lot of messages from viewers about a new military spec high strength multi polymer filament that consists out of a core made from polycarbonate and a hull out of ABS. Since I wanted to find out if this really could result in injection mold strength 3D prints, I actually 3D printed myself similar material on the E3D tool changer and with the help of a proper heat treatment oven got to work and boy that was quite a journey. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. So filament made from PC ABS, which is a blend of the two materials, is something that is quite common and helps combine different properties of the materials for specific needs. I have been using PC ABS or other PC blends in the past and even though they show good overall properties, layer adhesion in particular is still something they're usually not great at. When I first read the articles about this new type of filament, I wasn't sure how this star-shaped pattern on the inside of the filament should help with mechanical properties. The paper they wrote about this method explained it better though. The general idea is that you heat treat your parts over the glass transition temperature but below the melting point after printing, which supposedly fuses the layers together. Unfortunately, if you usually put prints into your oven and heat them over the glass transition temperature, which is important that the healing process works, they severely deform and make them not properly usable anymore. The idea behind the dual material filament is that the flow of the material through the 3D printer nozzle is laminar, so your print, that looks from the outside like ABS, is reinforced internally via a continuous polycarbonate core. This is important for the heat treatment step. ABS has a glass transition temperature of around 100 degrees Celsius and PC significantly higher at around 140 degrees Celsius. In order to minimize deformations, the heat treatment temperature with this material is above the glass transition temperature of ABS but below the one of PC. This way the polycarbonate stays strong and reinforces the ABS and minimizes deformation during the process. The long exposure to heat in the paper, they treated parts for 3 to 7 days, supposedly fuses the ABS layers, giving it superior strength, especially in between the layers. Sounds like a plausible idea to me and worth trying out. PC and ABS are a good combination of materials for such a task, because they are mixable and work and can fuse together. Not every material combination does work due to things like polarity and you might have experienced that in the past when you, for example, changed materials from nylon to PLA and noticed that the first layers don't stick together anymore until enough material got purged. In the paper, they printed a big rod of material with different shapes of the core, heated the rod up and drew filament from it. Since I don't have such a device, I had to come up with another way of manufacturing. Quite a while ago, I saw Dasmia, a fellow maker from the community, 3D printing her own rainbow 3D printing filament, which is an ingenious idea. But instead of printing sections of whole layers of different colored filaments, I'll be using my E3D tool changer to directly print a filament spiral that uses different materials for the core and the hull. The process is pretty simple and I created a model for the filament spiral in Fusion 360 which consists out of two parts. One is the core, the other one is the outer section. If you are interested in the design process, check out 3D Maker Noob's detailed video on it. Due to the size of the filament and me using 0.4mm nozzles, I couldn't really get fancy with the internal design, but I think that's sufficient for the first start. The ratio between ABS and PC ended up to be 64 to 36, which is a similar ratio as you might find in PC ABS blends. In the slicer, I handled the spiral like a normal multicolored print and assigned one part to the ABS tool, the other one to the polycarbonate tool. E3D's tool changer is a great printer for such experiments because it has individual tool heads so individual nozzles to extrude the filament, which prevents contaminating one of the polymers with the remains of the other one and you don't have to worry about purging. Together with the AC heated bed that heats up quicker than the nozzles, make it great for printing even demanding materials because it can go all the way up to 200 degrees Celsius. 
Just on a side note, if you wanted to make such a multi-material filament on an industrial scale, there are co-extrusion machines that can directly extrude those types of filaments, though they are more expensive and more complex than a normal single screw extruder. Printing wasn't without problems, because at first I had to make sure that the material sticks to the print plate. Usually I would have used typical adhesion sprays and liquids, but since they always leave residues on the parts, this wasn't an option for the filament, because that could later contaminate and therefore ruin the filament. So I remembered a trick from the old days and mixed myself some ABS slurry by dissolving ABS and acetone that can be brushed on the glass bed and only leaves a thin film of material on it. The second problem was mesh bed leveling with my tool changer. That was a bit buggy in the version of RepRap firmware that I used at that time. It's fixed now, but I upgraded the firmware only recently. Therefore, first layers were not always perfect and sometimes sections lifted. The base materials that I used for the dual material filaments were Spoolworks ABS that I printed at 245 degrees Celsius and Hobby King's Premium PC printed at 280 degrees Celsius. The PC itself was a bit of a pain to print on the glass bed because it either didn't stick properly or it ripped pieces of glass out of the surface. In the past I had more success printing it on the smooth PEI of my Prusa with either glue stick or Magigo PC. Manufacturing the dual material filament still overall worked quite well and I printed spiral after spiral and checked at least the maximum dimension that was sometimes a bit too high due to the material lifting by just pulling it through a spare heat break. This way I could prevent jams during printing. Dimensions themselves, even though around the circumference not always perfect, were quite consistent over the length. I put the coils on empty spools and printed with them on my Prusa Mark III. I didn't find anything in the paper in regards to printing temperature for the dual material filament. I chose an in-between value of the materials and set the nozzle to 260 degrees Celsius. The print results were really stunning, especially since it's not a high precision filament. I slightly upped the extrusion factor due to the shape, but otherwise printing results looked really good with the advantage of the nice surface finish of the ABS, but less overheating problems. I cut a section of the filament with an X-Acto knife to nicely show the internal structure. We can see the transparent core of the polycarbonate and the hull of ABS. Don't mind the white part, that's just from cutting the ABS. If we do the same thing just with a piece of filament that was extruded through the nozzle, we see that the structure remains and we can still distinguish ABS and PC, so laminar flow in the nozzle is confirmed. Pure printing performance itself wasn't the main goal of this analysis. I wanted to find out if this material can really be annealed without the downsides of warping and increase the material properties this way. I printed a ton of samples from the base polymers as a reference and the PC core ABS, of which I'll test one half as a reference in the as printed state and the other half will be annealed and then tested. I manufactured impact test samples as well as my mini tensile test samples, both in the lying and more importantly in the standing orientation, where we want to see how layer adhesion changes. I also printed temperature test samples from the PC and the ABS base filaments to see when they start to see really soften to choose an annealing temperature for the following tests. I put those samples into my kitchen convection oven, because I can see through the door. The ABS samples failed at 115 degrees Celsius. The PC samples maintained their structural stability all the way up to 165 degrees Celsius. This test doesn't really give me the glass transition temperature, rather it gives me the heat deflection temperature, though I assumed that TG should be a couple of degrees below the failure temperature. With those results I decided I'll be using 130 degrees Celsius as annealing temperature, which is just slightly below the 135 degrees Celsius from the paper. In the end, it's probably a compromise between time and temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the diffusion process. So we have to make sure that we maintain the reinforcing property of the PC by not reaching its glass transition temperature. Next, I measured and marked all the samples before the heat treatment process to analyze dimensional changes and placed all of the parts on a flat glass mirror in my lab oven. Oh, and if you enjoy my videos, Make sure to subscribe and select the notification bell to not miss anything in the future.
Besides the test samples from the three different filaments, I also added a 3D Benchy and this rectangular section to the oven, set it to 130 degrees Celsius and left the samples in the chamber for four and a half days. During the first two days, there was a sweet, rubbery smell coming from the oven, which was probably the butyl from the ABS, which vanished after a while. After the 112 hours at 130 degrees Celsius, I turned off the oven and left everything to cool down for the night. I was really excited to see what happened to the samples during the week in the heat. After opening the oven, I was able to clearly see that the ABS samples didn't take the heat well. The PC didn't look impacted at all and our dual material parts just showed the tiniest signs of sagging. That did already look really promising. The dimensional measurements on the samples confirmed the observations. All the ABS parts looked basically unusable anymore. They gained on average around 20% in height, so the Z direction, and shrunk between 5 to 10% in length, so on the XY plane. Both the PC and PC core ABS mostly retained their shape and most dimensional changes were only around 0 to 2%, which could also be measuring inconsistencies. Next, I finally measured the mechanical properties we've all been waiting for. All in all, I tested around 50 tensile samples and 50 impact samples from before and after the heat treatment session. We'll start with the untreated baseline. In terms of tensile strength, ABS was the weakest with around 35 megapascals of maximum stress of the lying specimens and around half of that for the standing ones. Hobby King Premium PC really impressed me because it was almost twice as strong as ABS and layer adhesion samples were still able to bear 80% of the load, which I haven't really seen on any other materials besides PP, but that's only a quarter as strong. The S-built PC core ABS parts were a bit stronger than pure ABS, probably due to the reinforcement of the PC. The layer adhesion samples were able to bear 60% of the load, which is the value we are really interested in in the end. Let's now take a look at the results of the heat treated samples. The ABS samples were hugely distorted. So take these values with a grain of salt. Still, the strength values stayed completely the same. And more dramatically, the layer adhesion also doesn't seem to hugely improve, which isn't a promising start. Polycarbonate gains a significant amount of strength to almost 75 megapascals. The strength of the layer adhesion samples also improved a bit, but the ratio stayed at around 80%. Interestingly, we don't get any additional strength without costs because the parts broke less ductile than the untreated ones. Almost as suspected, the dual material filament did also only improve slightly in axial strength and the layer adhesion only improved by the same amount as well. The fracture surface looks slightly different, though no indication of fusing together in the test data. So far, it looks as if we unfortunately again haven't found a way to fuse layers together with annealing. But let's also take a look at the impact strength. I put the notched samples one after another into my DIY impact testing machine and struck them with a hammer to find how much energy the material can absorb. What we're able to see is that in this test, the print direction dependence is even more present because all materials had a way lower impact strength when printed standing as when printed lying. Our own ABSPC dual material filament performed the best in the unannealed state, even better than ABS or PC on their own, so the combination seems to have some benefits. ABS came second and PC was last. Still, those values are very good in comparison to PLA or PETG for example. Unfortunately, due to the amount of warping, I wasn't able to test the ABS samples in the annealed state. PC behaved similarly as we have seen in the previous test by becoming a little more brittle. Though considering the scatter of the test, not by that much. Our multi-material prints, well, unfortunately, didn't really change in terms of impact strength. The slight difference I was able to see is that those samples didn't fully break apart but in the end we're still held by a small thread, though that didn't show up in the strength values. 
It seems that the exposure to heat didn't harm, but also didn't seem to significantly fuse the layers together in a way I hoped. Kind of unfortunate. This test was quite a huge amount of work to be honest, and I really hoped we would be able to see some improvements in terms of layer adhesion. I still think the approach that the authors of the paper suggested can be used for some very interesting property materials. We have clearly seen that the PC core was able to reinforce the ABS and prevented it from warping. So maybe I try out different heat treatment recipes to see if I have better success with others. Perhaps experimenting with different combinations of material like PLA and TPU might result in improved impact strength. Who knows? So if you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments to see if we can come up with something cool and new. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you're all doing well. If you found this video helpful, then leave a like, share it with the community and make sure that you're subscribed for more. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon, become a YouTube member or use the affiliate links in the description. Go check out my other videos if you currently have more time than usual and want to educate yourself. Stay healthy, auf Wiedersehen and I hope to see you in the next one.